Hello, welcome to today's basic technology class. Today we're going to be looking at a topic, safety. We're going to be looking at safety in the workshop. Safety in the workshop. Like you know, technology is all about what's practical. You carry out what experiments, you do what you do practicals, and all these practicals are done in the what in the workshop. So now how do we work in the workshop to ensure that we don't injure ourselves or to ensure that we don't endanger ourselves in any form of accident? So we'll be looking at what is safety with safety procedures by which what we can protect ourselves in the workshop. I remember in our previous classes we discussed about the concept of technology and we also looked at technology and society talking about the products of technology and how technology has come to help give comfort to mankind. And also we look at the various sectors in which technology has helped mankind. So in today's class, we'll be looking at the safety techniques and the procedures we are to undergo in order to keep ourselves safe when working in the workshop. Because it's very important to ensure that we are safe in the workshop to avoid a hazard or accident. So we we'll look at the meaning of safety. The safety means freedom from hazard or accident. Safety simply means freedom from hazard or accident. Like we know, accident is a negative experience that happened to somebody when he does not expect it. Yes. It's an unpleasant event, unwanted events that happen when you don't expect it. That's also what accident is, is. When you don't expect accident, that's when it occurs. And so this lesson or this call has come to explain to us the various tips we can do to what prevent this accident. That's why they say safety means freedom from hazard or accident. It's important we study safety because we are going to be working in the workshops. As a technologist, you work in the workshop you work in the laboratory, so you need to caution yourself. You need to put some things in place to prevent what? To prevent hazards or accidents. So safety simply means freedom from any hazard or accident. And like I said, I feel accident is a negative experience that happens to somebody when he does not expect it. Any harm or injury that is done to a student in the workshop while he or she is working on machine is called accident. Yes, when you're operating a machine and maybe they mistakenly or due to your due to lack of concentration on the machine you are operating or maybe you did not follow the instructions pertaining the machine and then you injure yourself or maybe some harm occur we call that was accident so any harm or injury that is done to a student in the workshop while he or she is working on the machine is called an accident let me give an instance maybe for instance now you are using a cutting tool you're using a cutting tool like so saw or chainsaw and maybe you are in the process of cutting a wood or in the process of cutting a metal mistakenly now this saw um cuts you is an accident because what you do not expect it is just it's an unpleasant event and it has what injured you so that is a typical example of accident so any harm or injury that is done to a student in the workshop while he or she is working on the machine is called an accident so accident prevention techniques, yes, for you to guarantee your safety, for you to ensure that your safety is sure, there are some accident preventive, prevent, and preventive techniques that you need to undergo. These techniques are what you need to do every day to ensure that what, you are free from accident. To ensure your safety, you need to what, carry out these preventive techniques to ensure that you are free from what accident. Now, number one here is routine checking. Routine checking. Definitely, you know, as a technologist or as a student working in a workshop, you deal with what instruments, you deal with machines, because there's no how you can carry out any practice or any activity in the workshop without using machine. Now, these machines you are using, you don't just jump on them daily and start using them without checking the machines. No. Doing this, you are putting yourself like in danger. You are endangering yourself to accident, like you are being prone to accident. If you just jump on machine and you use these machines, without checking them daily you are calling accident theory so you have to what, do routine checking routine checking here simply means what checking all the machines to ensure that they are in good condition before setting them up for use a brief example not even in the workshop is your car 
when your dad wake up in the morning, he will go to his car. He will make sure that what he checks the car daily in the morning before he what he leaves or set out for work. So you need to check your machines. You don't just use them because some machines now like this. Okay, let me give an instance. Maybe your chainsaw, as I say now, a knot might be loose there, and the knot is supposed to be tightly fixed. So now, in the course of using this machine, you discover that this knot will fall off, and when the knot fall off, accidents occur. So to prevent this kind of thing from happening, what do you do? You check your machines daily before setting them up for for use. So you check your machine. You ensure that they are in good condition before you use them. That is what routine checking means. Routine checking. The word routine means what constantly, daily. Routine, make it a routine. Then the checking, you check your instrument, you check your machines to ensure they are in good condition. Then when you check and you see that they are in bad condition, what do you do? Now we move to the next step, which is what routine servicing. After you check, after the routine checking daily, and you notice that okay, this machine is not in good condition, what do you do? You service it. That we call routine servicing. It involves what, servicing all machine and checking the one out parts regularly so that they work efficiently. Remember, I just told you that. When you check your machine, like the chainsaw, and discover that a knot that is supposed to be tightly fixed is loose, what do you do? You ensure that what you fix this knot tightly. Now that is servicing, routine servicing. So from routine checking, you enter what routine servicing. So these things work hand in hand. You need to check your machine regularly, daily before using them. And then when you discover that it is a fault, what do you do? You need to service it what regularly. Routine servicing involves what servicing all machines and checking the one out parts regularly so that they won't work what, efficiently. Because if the knot, if a knot that's supposed to be tightly fixed now is loose and you don't check or you don't service, you don't fix it back, definitely accident is going to happen. Accident will definitely happen. Because all these parts that work, they need to be what they need to be together. Once they are loose, they won't be able to carry out what, their function effectively. So for the machine to work what, eff efficiently, because technology, we, we try in as, as much as possible to, what, to do away with mistakes. And these mistakes often lead to what, accidents. So we try to put away mistakes. Once mistake is out, definitely accident is checked. So your routine checking is very important. You check them daily. Make sure they're in good condition before use. And then after routine checking, what do you do? You do your routine servicing. You will notice sometimes your dad will tell you that I want to go and service my car, maybe monthly or maybe weekly. He's going to service his car. Yes, he's doing this to prevent what? To prevent accident. He's doing this to ensure his safety because he doesn't want the car to break down anytime while he's driving. So all these words are prevent accident, accident preventive or technique. Another technique we're going to be looking at is what? Student comportment. Yes. Now remember that when you're in the workshop, the machines don't just operate themselves. No, we as individuals, you as a student, you operate this machine. Now, for you to prevent accidents or for you to ensure your safety, you must comport yourself while in the workshop. That's why student comportment is very, very important. It's an important aspect of what accident prevention. Students should avoid noise, noise making and talkativeness. Most of the students talk a lot these days. They talk a lot. And talking in the workshop will make you what, lose focus. You lose concentration on the machine. When you are working on the machine, you need to be focused on the machine. You need to follow the instructions in the manual. The person that made this machine has already given you an instruction. He has given you a manual for you to follow. You need to follow this manual. But when you are talking, when you are working on the machine, or you are just with your friends, you lose concentration, you lose focus. And what happens? Accidents occur. So to ensure safety, you need to what? comport yourself while in the workshop. You need to comport yourself while in the workshop in order to what, avoid accidents. Student comportment, this deals mainly with the students, is very, very important. Follow instructions very well. You follow the um, manuals from your teachers. You follow that from, from even the, the inventors that produce these machines to, uh, to, ensure what, you ensure, to ensure your safety so as to prevent what, accidents from occurring. Because sometimes the accident that occurs might not affect you alone. It might even affect other students around you. Take for instance, you're working on chemicals in the laboratory and you do not focus or you, you do not put concent you do not um, put total concentration in these chemicals they are doing. And you know chemicals are like reactions. For instance, explosions might occur. And when these explosions occur, it won't affect you alone. It might affect others around you. Now you've endangered the lives of those around you and yourself. So you need to comport yourself while in the workshop to prevent all these accidents from happening.
So student comportment is very, very well important. Now, another one is preventive measures. Preventive measures. Electronic equipment should be used with voltage stabilizers in order to prevent what? electrical fires as a result of power source. Yes, we know that when the country, the country we are this day now is a country by our light save, our power is not stable. So at, at any time we might have power surge, like the power of the voltage might be too high. So it is advised that while before you operate any electrical instrument or electric, uh, electronic equipment, ensure you what you use a voltage stabilizer. Because for instance, now maybe you are using an electric heater or a mantle for heating, and then you do not use you 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 do not use a, um, a voltage stabilizer and you just plug it directly to the, to the power source or power supply, and then suddenly there's a power surge. What happens? this instrument will just blow off and in the process of this explosion what happened fire outbreak and you know electrical fire outbreak is a very very old, bad disaster now imagine there's a fire outbreak in a workshop due to this explosion what happened fire will begin to watch, consume everywhere burning down the workshop even the the lives of those in the workshop as i is a danger so you need to follow what preventive measures ensure that when you are working what, with electronic equipment, you use a voltage stabilizer in order to prevent what, electrical fire because fire is a very, very bad thing. There's nothing that fire will consume that will ever remain the same. No. Once fire consumes anything, it will change that thing completely and totally, like permanently. It can never go back to the way it was. And that is why it is very important we prevent fire in the workshop. It's important to prevent fire in the workshop. So we have to what, ensure these preventive measures. Ensure these preventive measures. There are many ways we ensure preventive measures. It's not just by using voltage stabilizer. No, voltage stabilizer is one of these, but not just all by using voltage stabilizer. There are other preventive measures you have to do. Like using of your gloves, why, why walking, use your gloves, why operating chemicals, like there are some harmful chemicals that you need to use gloves to prevent, like acid. acid. Acid and base that are very corrosive, they can they affect the skin. So what do you do? You use gloves when working with all these what, chemicals. Also, when you're working with um, sawdust, so, things like sawdust, you have to what, use a face mask or a nose mask to cover your nose so that you won't inhale all these particles because these particles are dangerous to the health. Likewise, when you're dealing with, what, um, with traditions, you need to cover yourself. So all these are preventive measures in order to what, prevent accidents in order to prevent what accidents in the workshop you need to what carry out these preventive measures so we talk about accident prevention techniques we said routine checking and we've talked about the routine servicing and i talked about the student comportment which deals with yourself you need to what comport yourself while in the workshop you need to ensure that you pay total attention like critical attention to whichever machine you are operating because at that moment, you are the operator, and the machine will only do what you ask it to do. Then we'll also talk about the preventive measures, the things you're supposed to do in the laboratory, the do's and don'ts. That's the fall under this word, preventive measures. Now, we're going to be looking at the causes of work, workshop accidents. Some causes of workshop accidents. They say accidents occur when the one out part of a machine, when the one out part of a machine are not fixed or on time. When the one-out parts of machines are, when they are not fixed on time, when these one-out parts of the machines are not fixed on time, that is when what accidents occur. Now, you are I told you I gave you an example. You are pressing a chainsaw used for cutting wood, and then suddenly a knot there just loses. You notice that once this knot loses like this, the chain, the saw what the saw will just detach itself from its the main body as the main engine and this can just run directly to your skin and because will cause accidents endangering your life so one cause of accident is what when the one part of machines are not fixed on time another part is what when students play rough in the workshop like i told you, you know earlier on we talk about preventive measure that's the preventive measures like what students comportment now when students fail to comport themselves, what happens? Accident will definitely occur because you do not pay attention while working. You are talking while using the machine. And some of these machines require what you to pay attention. It requires you to follow them up gradually to avoid accidents. But when you fail to follow them up gradually, what happens? You will cause accidents. 
So students playing rough in the workshop is a cause of what? Accidents. Now when students do not follow teachers or manufacturer instruction on how to use the machine, yes, I told you earlier on that for every machine that has been produced, for every equipment that has been produced, for, that has been invented, there is always a, what, a manuscript, like a manual, that will guide you on how to operate this what, machine. So you don't just jump on the machine and start operating when you do not understand the principle at which this machine works. So you need to understand the principle of this machine, how the machine works, how to go about this machine. So you follow this, um, the manufacturer instruction. All the instruction from your teachers, anything your teacher says you should do, you do it because your teachers are trained. They are trained personnel. They are trained in operating these machines. So for you to operate this machine, you need to follow their instruction. So when you fail to follow the instruction of a teacher or the manufacturer, what happens? You will definitely cause what accident. You will definitely cause accident. So these are the basic three causes of accident in the workshop. Now we're looking at what safety devices. Safety devices. Now you notice that when you work, when you're working in the um, in the workshop or in the laboratory, there are some equipment, there are some materials, some instruments you need to use to what to protect your body, because you know our flesh, this skin, is very very like prone to corrosive substances. So while working in the laboratory, you need to cover your body, some delicate parts of your body like your eye, your nose, your chest. Your hands, your legs, you need to cover the delicate parts of your body from what? With, with, with some devices in order to prevent what accident because these devices will actually help to protect you. Now, I say in order to maintain safety in the workshop during practical session, certain devices have been provided to protect the students. These are called safety devices. Yes, all these instruments, materials you use in the laboratory, used in the workshop during practicals, to protect yourself are called what? safety devices. They are used to protect the delicate parts of our body, such as the eye, the nose, the hand, the chest, the, our, our foot. Now, I, list, I listed out um, these um, safety devices, and I said they include what? Boots. Boots. Why do you use boots in a, in, in a, work, in a workshop? Now, I'll give you an example, why you, like an instance why you need boots. Now, take for instance, you're working with corrosive chemicals, like acid. And then maybe mistakenly this acid pour on the floor. These boots tend to protect your foot, protect your leg from what from this damage, from the harm that will be caused by this acid. But imagine you're not putting on boots, what will happen? This acid will get to your skin and what it will burn your skin. So you see that the boots here helps to protect your leg. Goggle. Goggle is the one you wear in the eye to protect what your eye. You know, eye is a very, very delicate part. In fact, if you, if you, without vision, I'm not sure you can operate any machine. So your eye is very important in operating a machine and you need to protect this eye because it's very, very delicate. And the instrument or the safety device for protecting the eye is the goggle. The what? The goggle. This goggle protects your eyes from what? From harmful substances, even from, from dust or from flames. Now we have the overall. The overall is like, is that, um, is the, how do I put it? It's like a cloth that is worn when you're operating in the, what, in the workshop to protect the chest, to protect the body, to protect the skin, you use what overall. Then you also have the helmet. The helmet is used to cover the head, to protect the skull. Take for instance, now you see some people riding bike, um, all these people that do ride bike, like racing, this sports racing, you see them with, with helmets on their head. Yes, it's very important because accidents might occur, you might fall down at any time. And to avoid injury to the head, you know, this, this skull you are seeing, houses the brain and the brain is the center of intelligence is the control center that controls everything that occurs in your body so if you fall now without this element and you affect the brain there will be what disorientation of the body so you need to protect this brain in order to protect this brain you have to what you have to use the helmet to cover the skull another one is the hand glove it is very very important that while you are working in the what in the workshop you use your hand glove this hand glove helps to protect your hand when you are using what harmful chemicals like acid Example of this acid that tetrahydrosulfate acid is as um, what you know as is sulfuric acid. You protect your hand from burns. So these are what safety devices. Safety devices simply means these equipments that you use while you are working in the workshop to protect your body, the delicate part of the body, the eyes, the nose, the chest, your hands, and your leg. So with this, we've come to the end of today's class on safety in the workshop. So briefly, I just, you have a very short assignment. 
and I see number one says mention five safety devices five safety devices you have to mention five safety devices and then list two causes of accident in the workshop list two causes of accidents in the workshop what do you think causes accidents in the workshop but what do you think is the cause of accidents in the workshop and then also list the devices that you know you use to save protect yourself while in the workshop so before we go i would like to do a recap on what we've talked about so we talked about um safety with the safety means what freedom from hazard or accident and we say what is accident that accidents what is an unpleasant event or experience that happened to you or to somebody when he or she doesn't expect it it's like there, it's it's like harm or injury that is done to a student in the workshop while working on a machine and we say that how do you what are the preventive measures to do when what's working in the workshop to avoid accident i talk about routine checking routine checking checking your machines your instrument before using them daily then when you check and you see that what well, there's a fault you do what you undergo routine servicing you service your machines regularly you fix the one out parts on time to prevent accident then we talk about students comportment and we say this is very important because as an operator while in the workshop you need to what comport yourself you need to you need to make sure that what you you pay total attention to the machine that you're operating to avoid what accident so you comport yourself and then we talk about the preventive measures following what lay down rules and regulation definitely when you enter any workshop you will see the rules and regulation in the workshop you need to obey these rules and regulation you need to follow the manuscript of the manufacturer and also your teacher's instruction so these are the preventive measures and then we talk about the causes of workshop accidents and we say what when this one out part of the machines are not fixed on time it can lead to accidents and we say students playing rough not paying total attention while operating the machine and we say when students do not follow the manuscript or the manufacturer instruction or your teacher instruction when you do not follow it when you just want to do your own you want to just follow your own mind we say what all these are what causes of what accidents not paying total attention to the machine you're operating all these are what causes of workshop accidents and then we talk about safety devices and i think these are devices that does what that we use to cover certain delicate part of our body to protect delicate part of our body while working in the workshop and talk about mention the boots that used to cover the foot the goggle for the eye the overall for the body the chest most especially the helmets for the skull to protect the brain the hand the hand gloves to protect our hand especially while we're working with what with chemicals so all these are what the safety devices and then i give you an assignment and i say that i should mention five safety devices and i should list two causes of accidents in the workshop so with this we've come to the end of today's basic technology class topic safety now i want us to make sure that we follow all these guidelines that we've given now this teaching is not just for teaching sake it's for you to what to follow all these that we've said so that when next you find yourself in a workshop you ensure that what you carry out all these things to prevent accidents because it won't be nice to hear that what any one of us is engaged and the end is involved in an accident is a very very unpleasant thing so for us to avoid this accident we need to what, ensure that we carry out these things thank you very much for listening i as i still remain samuel babatunde and i will still be taking you on more topics in basic technology please if you're watching this video on youtube ensure you subscribe to our youtube channel thanks and goodbye